Thank you all for participating in the bells, the ring of the bells of liberty. Welcome to our selectmen, Paul Glavy, Joe Knox, Cynthia Napoli, Chuck DeCoast, and Chase Gerbic. Welcome. Welcome fellow veterans, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Everybody stand. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Please welcome Riley Wallen as she sings the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the Thank you, Riley. In Flanders Field, there's a poem by John McRae. Uh, Flanders Field, uh, it, it, it dates back to World War One. I. I have Reagan Donovan will read Flanders Field. Reagan, please. Flanders fields the poppies blow between the crosses row on row that mark our place and in the sky the larks still bravely singing fly scarce heard amid the guns below we are the dead short days ago we lived felt dawn saw sunset glow loved and were loved and now we lie in Flanders fields take up our quarrel with the foe to you from failing hands we throw the torch be yours to hold it high if ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Thank you, Regan. Very much. Appreciate it. Brandon, please come to the podium, please, for the governor's proclamation. Can I ask Paul Glavy to step forward, please? Proclamation. Whereas, since the Commonwealth's com colony di colonial days, thousands of men and women have served our country in defense of freedom, liberty, and whereas on November 11th, 1918, the armistice was signed in the forest of Com Copien, Copien yeah. Yeah. by the Allied nations in Germany, ending World War One. The war to end all wars, after four years of conflict, and whereas since that day, every November, people from around the nation have gathered to honor our veterans, and whereas since that day, 
officer. Where is? There, there are approximately 388,000 veterans living in Massachusetts, and whereas today we are reminded of the great sacrifices and contributions our veterans have made to our country, and whereas we honor and salute those who served our country throughout the generations with honor, patriotism, and courage, and whereas it is appropriate that all Massachusetts citizens remember the bravery of those who serve their country so that their dedication and sacrifices serve as a reminder of the cost of our freedom. And whereas in November 2018 the world will commemorate this 100th anniversary of the armistice that ended the fighting in World War I at 11 a.m. November 11th, 1918, the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. Now, therefore, I, Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim November 11th, 2018 to be Veterans Day. And urge all the citizens of the Commonwealth to take cognizance of this event and, partic and participate fittingly in its, uh, in its observance. Given at the Executive Chamber in Boston this 11th day of November, in the, two, two, in the year 2018, and of the independence of the United States of America, the 242nd. Signed by His Excellence Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth. Thank you. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brent. And Paul. All right. Now, again, I welcome everybody. Um, it's an honor today to join you with, as we recognize all of American veterans, all the soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen who have selflessly gone before they, they were, wherever they were called to serve. This year, Veterans Day has extra meaning of 100 years ago on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month in, 20, in 1918, the Great War, the war the end of all wars, finally ended. Originally created in recognition of the end of World War I, the first Veterans Day was observed on November 11th, 1921 at Arlington National Cemetery and was marked by a burial of the unknown soldier from World War I. Even nearly 100 years later, as we gather to reflect on, the, on those who have fought to preserve the freedoms every American enjoys, there are thousands of men and women in our military once again, taking up arms against the enemies of our, for, of our way of our life. Like generations of patriots who came before them, these few soldiers, the bur burden for many, they serve because they know it is necessary for the greater good. Now more than ever, it is important that we take time to thank the men and women who selfishly sacrifice to serve in our armed forces. I want to thank all the veterans here today and wherever. Uh, thank you for your service. Uh, I, I know I've been part of it too, and, and I know sometimes uh, somebody, when we, some of us came back, we didn't get greeted properly, but I want to say welcome home to the Vietnam veterans and, and say thank you all for your service. At this time, we'll ask our uh, guest speaker, uh, Paul Glavy, the chairman of the Board of Selectmen. Thank you, John. Thank you all, veterans. Good morning. I'm very mindful that uh, William Henry Harrison, when he was inaugurated president on a cold day, decided to brave it without a top coat and a hat read a long speech, got a cold, turned into pneumonia, and he died a month into his term of office. So this will not be a long speech, <laughs> by my standards. 11 a.m., we all know the significance of that time that we meet here today on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918, an armistice was reached which ended the First World War. A little more than four years and 14 million lives lost later. 
On that fall morning, outside a little village in the Meuse Argonne salient in northeastern France, Private Henry Gunther of Baltimore, Maryland, and his platoon were on patrol when they spotted a German machine gun nest not far away. Henry Gunther, to the astonishment of his fellow doughboys, fixed bayonet and charged the enemy. In broken English, the German soldiers shouted at him to stop. He didn't, and eventually they opened fire. Henry Gunther's death was recorded at 10.59 a.m., one minute before the armistice, the last soldier killed in the Great War. The date of the armistice was known for more than two days by both sides in the war, and the hour was announced that morning, and still the orders to fighting went on and on. In total, over 11,000 soldiers lost their lives on the last day of fighting in World War I. That is more than the 10,000 soldiers who died in the D-Day invasion in June 1944 at the height of the Second World War. Why? In the case of Henry Gunther, the possible answer is just as troubling as the question. A few weeks earlier, he had been demoted in rank uh, for some infraction, and his platoon buddies after said that he very much wanted to prove his valor and win back his sergeant stripes. After the war, General Pershing restored Gunther to the rank of sergeant posthumously. The grim realities of the horror of the First World War, unlike anything we ever experienced before, become clearer both in the individual stories of soldiers like Henry Gunther and also in the context of historical comparison. For those of us whose greatest living memory of America, Americans at war is the vet, uh, Vietnam conflict, the raw numbers tell a chilling story. In roughly eight months, from March to November 1918, the American Expeditionary Force, the U.S. Army in World War I, saw losses of 116,000 killed. For perspective, total losses over the 10 plus years of the Vietnam War were 56,000 U.S. servicemen killed. The American soldiers of World War I suffered twice as many casualties in less than one-tenth of the time period. This past spring on Memorial Day, I had the opportunity to speak, and because we did not know then uh, that through the efforts of our veterans agent John Borowski and my colleague Selectman Cindy Napoli that we would be holding this ceremony here today, I chose to recognize by name several of the Littleton soldiers who served in the First World War and to add where I could where I could, details of who they were based on my own limited interaction with some of them many years earlier and at the mercy of imperfect memory. A few days later, I received in the mail a wonderful letter from someone who had listened to my remarks. 93-year-old Lois Smith of Harwood Avenue commend commended the effort to keep alive the memories of those Little Tonians who served in the First World War, but she also politely corrected me on some mistakes and inaccuracies I had made in my speech. I spoke with Lois this morning, by the way. She's doing great, but didn't feel up to coming out here this morning. Rather than repeat the entire list uh, with Lois's corrections today, I would like instead to quote from her letter to me, which paints a vivid picture of the Littleton that these soldiers knew in a way uh, that a first-hand account can only give. She wrote, Your Aunt Mary and I rode our bikes over every street, lane, and path in Littleton and many in surrounding towns. We didn't know everyone in every house, but we did know who the houses belonged to and who the owners were related to and what they did for a living. And most every family was related to at least one other family in town as was most every family was related to someone else we knew in the first quarter of the 1900s. So that meant right here in Littleton Common, she would have known veterans George Wood, who lived right over there on Meeting House Road, Ransford Furbeck, who lived on Robinson Road in the historic Baker House that the town purchased this past May. The various Conants, including three World War I veterans who own the Conant store and the ironworks, which used to be located over behind where the gas station is. The Furbish brothers didn't live on the common, but they were among the congregants at the Baptist Church. Dr. Donald Currier had his office right there in that building next to the gas station. And if we stretch the common area a little bit to include Shattuck Street, 
That's where Alan Hathaway lived and where our World War I memorial stands now at Hathaway Corner. Those World War I Littleton veterans are long gone now. After 100 years, they, barely, they are barely memories to fewer and fewer of us. That is simply the function of time. But we are very fortunate today to have still with us a few surviving veterans from Littleton of the great conflict that ended 73 years ago, the Second World War. At least two that I know of are here this morning. If you get a chance before you leave, before we leave, do yourself a favor and say hello and thank you to the living local examples of what has been properly called the greatest generation, Littleton's World War II veterans. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Uh, our next speaker, selectman and member of Friends of Littleton Veterans, Cindy Napoli. Good morning. <clears throat> Today is a special occasion and I truly appreciate everyone who took the time to show their support and attend this ceremony. Thank you for being here. Both Memorial Day and Veterans Day are patriotic holidays created to honor service, our servicemen and women. Memorial Day is meant to be a solemn occasion and a time to reflect on all Americans who made the ultimate sacrifice while protecting and defending our country, the United States of America. Veterans Day is observed every November 11th and recognizes all who have served in the armed forces. It is a day to show our appreciation and give thanks to those who served our country, including their families who also sacrificed so much. Today we acknowledge the end of World War I, a hundred years ago today, and remember the Littleton residents who served in the First World War and paved the way for hundreds more who would choose the path of service over self and leave the comfort of our little town to serve and protect our country. Some of those men and women are with us today, and Littleton has a new generation of brave young adults who are actively serving in the military and stationed all over the world. A picture says a thousand words, and there are many pictures of Littleton residents who served displayed at VFW Post 6556. Photographs which provide a glimpse to a story we may never be told. For while life went on as usual in 01460, Many of our friends, family, and neighbors embarked on a journey to places we will never know, to see what we cannot imagine and experience things difficult to comprehend. They served in different branches of the military and fought to protect our country in many ways, but they all shared the common goal of protecting our liberty, which is something they chose to do not for themselves, but for us. Some of them made it home to feel a loved one in their arms once again, and others came home draped in the embrace of the American flag. And they are all the reason we are gathered here today. In contrast to Memorial Day, a day of remembrance, Veterans Day is a day to give thanks and show our gratitude. I can't help but feel, however, that Veterans Day and Memorial Day are one and the same of, in the mind of all veterans who know too well that freedom is not free. We cannot fill the void created by losing a friend or loved one, and we cannot heal the pain from wounds we don't see, the wounds they don't want us to see. But we can try today and every day to honor, support, and embrace all of our veterans in active duty military in the hope that acknowledgement of their sacrifice, expression of our gratitude, unconditional support, and acts of random kindness, no matter what those may be, will somehow repay them for all that they have given to us. We stand before the Edgar P. Romley Veterans Corner, which was created to recognize all veterans from Littleton who served in the American Armed Forces. Over 400 names of servicemen and women from Littleton who fought in World War II, Korea, and Vietnam are included in the Veterans Corner Honor Roll. And, there are, and to date, there are 456 additional names to add for the residents who fought in those conflicts as well as other conflicts which took place before and after September 11, 2001. The Board of Selectmen and Friends of Littleton Veterans are actively working on this project 
And it is our goal to be standing here one year from now, November 11, 2019, for the unveiling of the updated Edgar P. Romley Veterans Corner. We look forward to that day, and updates about this project will be served at future selectmen meetings and on Facebook at the Friends of Littleton, uh, Friend Veterans Corner Project, Littleton, Mass. Sorry. Thank you again for being here and celebrating this day with our community. I also want to take a moment to thank the parents, spouses, and children of our active duty military for the personal sacrifices they endure every day. In closing, I want to share a poem written by a soldier named George L. Skypeck, who served in a war I will not name. I feel his words will resonate with many here today, regardless of the conflict in which he fought. It is titled, Soldier. I was that which others did not want to be. I went where others feared to go and did what others failed to do. I asked nothing from those who gave, nothing, and reluctantly accepted the thought of eternal loneliness should I fail. I have seen the face of terror, felt the stinging cold of fear, enjoyed the sweet taste of a moment's love. I have cried, pained, and hoped. But most of all, I have lived times others would say were best forgotten. At least someday I will be able to say that I was proud of what I was, a soldier. Lest we forget, little Tim will never forget. Thank you and God bless. There are 104 veterans that are buried in, at West Lawn that we know of. Uh, and I say that's because I, I'm going by their records, uh, meaning the cemetery's records. Uh, please welcome the Boy Scouts as they read the, the 104 names. Merrill Gordon Eyre in the Army, Arthur R. Baker, uh, George, sorry, Barker. George Nathan Barker in the Army, Edgar, Edgar Leroy uh, Bartow in the Navy, Roland O. Benson, George, George Leslie Blood in the Army, Henry George Bond in the Army, Frederick Bookings in the Army, uh, William Francis Byrne in the Army, Paul Savita in the Army. And that's the first 10. Let's see. Um, Holland Coffins, Army. William John Conroy. Ashley Bird Cousins, Navy. Eloy Gay Daly. Richard Stanley Dodge, Navy. Paul Myers, Dove. Dana Warren Drury, MD. Frodo Elliott, AKA Fred Smith, Navy. William Leo Fitzpatrick, Ernest M. Flagg. Maurice Stillman Flagg, 11 to 21. Wesley Woodruff Flagg, Russell Brown Fletcher, Army. Ransford Wells Furbick. Herbert Flint Fur Furbish, Luther Blatcher Furbish, Army, Peter Gerby, Army, Stuart H. Gidney, Alan J. Gidney, George W. Golden, Jr., Army, Gilbert Dudwin, Chester M. Gott, Lester Wilmot Griffiths, Army. Victor D. Ham. Charles W. Harrison. Austin Lawrence Hartwell, Army. George Maurice Hartwell. Robert William Hartwell, Navy. Warren E. Hartwell, Navy. Jonathan Hartwell Harwood, Army. Alan J. Hathaway, Thomas Heppel, Army. 
Everett L. Hurdle, Lewis Iverson of the U.S. Army, Frederick K. Johnson, Jesse Johnson of the Army, William Austin Johnson, also of the Army, George E. Jones, oh, pardon me, Walter Jones, Albert Nicholas Kocher, Harvey F. Kirstead, Everett Foster Kimball, and Herbert C. Kimball. Charles H. Kirschbaum, Fred E. Knight, Army, Amos Hayward Knowlton, James P. Knox, Marines, Ralph Frank Lapierre, Robert Marston Lingham, Army, Ralph F. Littlefield, Nathaniel Love, Army, Joseph Lenehan Lovejoy, Julian Lovejoy, Navy, Alexander Lowry. Aaron Lund, Air Force. Cameron H. McLugage, Army. Francis P. Mangan, Army. Arthur R. Martin. William John McIver. Justin F. Merrill. Carl Edward Moore, Coast Guard. Carl Osmond Needham, Army. Ralph Murray Wing Nixon, Army. Warren Mansfield Nixon. Nicholas Pacey, Army. Peter J. Parent, Navy. Herbert Hiram Parker, Navy. Harry L. Peavy. Walter George Phelps, Army. Ralph Edwin Pratt. Herbert Bancroft Priest, MD, Roger Alex Alexander Priest, Herbert Fletcher Prouty, Army, Edwin Francis Robinson, Army, Albert F. Rollo, George W. Sables, Bennett Sanderson, Army, Elmer P. Sargent, Harold E. Sawyer, Gladys Lucinda Seaman, Wilbur Arnold Stearns, Army, George N. Stevens, Oliver D. G. Tenney, George, John Patrick Tobin, Army, Louis Tappan Todd, George William Tucker. Um, Neville U. Upton, Army, Charles J. Ware, Sherman Cresswell Warren, Roy Winchester White, George Enos Wood, Alfred Henry Woodward, Raymond Edgar, wait, yeah, Raymond Edgar Wright, Army, Warren E. Yap. And that's all of our 104 veterans. Thank you. Appreciate that. In addition, I asked for some family members in town to give me names of their uh, relatives. Uh, some of the ones I heard from are Harry Lee Plager, the great-grandfather of David James Plager, Beatrice Her Henrietta uh, Standrich uh, from the Gwen Carellos family. It was Maria Sibley's uh, family, right? Uh, Guy P. Rothwell, father of Paul Rothwell. Uh, also have uh, Harry H. White, uh, part of uh, Donna, Donna White's father, I believe it is, or, correct? Yes. Uh, and there was another one, uh, let's see, I got, what have to one? And it's Peter uh, Standwich, Standwich, which is also part of uh, the uh, Corellas family. Also have Mia Corella, who wants to read a poem written by her. Uh, where did I write it? By her grandfather. Please. Thank you. 
They Wonder Why by Peter Sandrovich. Just picture a soldier, a volunteer. He must have been so patriotic, so it does appear. He goes day by day through the hardships of war, facing death from GD cans as the cannons roar. He stays in the line doing his duties in rain or shine, perhaps comes out to rest if he can, then is ordered to go back again. It's a lonesome life that he must live, more lonesome than you, that's positive. He gets an issue of clothes once in six months, sleeps on the damp ground and never sees bunks. And in his clothes dwells the body louse, which never was heard of in his mother's house. Through it all, you never hear him complain. In the danger he faces, he's always game. But let this same soldier commit a light offense. He very well realizes that he has no chance. For five minutes later, after the armistice was signed, you see this same soldier doing three months' time. He's put in the guardhouse to do extra work. He would not shirk. As this he does day after day, working Sundays and holidays without any pay. Yet all he longs for is the final day, so he can return to his loved ones there to stay. For he is more lonesome, more lonesome than you. Thank you. And now I will ask for a moment of silence to remember all those that have passed before us, followed by taps. Please. As we close today, I just want to say a few more words. For every single man and woman who has done a U.S. military uniform by virtue of their service and sacrifice, today is their day to stand tall and be recognized for a great, by a great foundation. Today and every day, we must take the opportunity to keep alive the memories, sacrifices, and accomplishments of our nation's veterans. We must embrace every occasion to educate future generations the public and elected officials on the accomplishments, importance, and needs of our nation's veterans. I hope as we leave here today, each of us will be motivated and inspired by the deeds and accomplishments of patriots past and present. I hope this motivation will help lead us into a brighter future, armed with a renewed sense of patriotism and purpose. We must remain committed to a stronger nation and to our veterans. For it is our veterans who have sacrificed and paid the highest price for all of us. The Scouts will be holding a flag retirement ceremony at West Long Cemetery this afternoon at approximately 3 o'clock. Uh, if you have any flags that need to be properly retired, please bring them to the cemetery this afternoon. I thank you all for attending the ceremony today. Please join us for a lunch down at the Post VFW. The VFW Post on Taylor Street, uh, 21 Taylor Street, the corner of Wickham Ave, for lunch today. This concludes our ceremony for today. Thank you very much for attendance.
Remind us of purity and cleanliness of purpose, thought, word, and deed. The blue is for truth and justice, like the eternal blue of the star-filled heavens. The star represents the 50 sovereign states of our union. The U.S. flag should be treated with respect when it is flying and should be treated with respect when it is being retired. The American Creed states, It is my duty to my country to love it, to respect its constitution, to obey its laws, to respect its flag, and to defend it against all enemies. Therefore, we retire flags with dignity and respect when they become worn, torn, faded, or badly soiled. The flag ceases to be a flag when it is retired in flames or cut into pieces. We cut the flag into four pieces. Three red and white striped banners and the blue star field. We weave the blue field and we leave the blue field intact because no one should ever let the union be broken. A hundred years ago, on the eleventh hour of the eleventh day, the eleventh month, in the year 1918, began an armistice ending the Great War. The most devastating war in history of our, civil of our civilization. On the 11th of November of the following year, President Woodrow Wilson declared the Armistice Day in the honor of peace. Veterans who served in the Great War marched in parades from our hometown heroes. Ceremonies were held, speeches were made. World War I, the war to end all wars, because everyone hoped there would never be another. Unfortunately, this fragile peace only lasted for 20 years, ending with the beginning of World War II. After World War II, Armistice Day is still celebrated on November 11th. There are many new veterans who had little or no association with World War I. The word armistice means simply truce. Therefore, as years pass, the significance of this name changed. In, in Emporia, Kansas, in 1953, on November 11th, there was a Veterans Day program instead. And in 54, President Eisenhower signed a bill proclaiming November 11th to be no Veterans Day. The day has since evolved in time, not only for honoring our nation, protecting its for men and not only for honoring those who served in the Great War, but honoring all men and women who have served our nation, protecting its constitution and our freedom during time of peace or war. Please join in a minute of silence silent reflection in honor of those that have served our nation. Thank you. Please hold a reverent silence as we do our duty to our flag and our nation. If any would like, anyone would like to take part in the ceremony, please fall behind the scouts and ventures and follow their lead. The ceremony will be concluded at the end with the playing of taps. At this point, pairs of two will receive big will receive flags. Step forward, <coughs> unfold them, and ceremoniously retire. After each flag has been retired, Scouts will then salute them and return to the end of our lines. <coughs> First two pair, may you go up and receive your flag. Let the ceremony begin.
You will now hear the ceremonial playing of taps. Thank you. This now concludes our ceremony. Color guard, would you please? Two. Thank you.